Can you tell me your name and when you were born and where you were born? My name is Mary Ann Chavez and I married a man named Montañez. So, so I use Chavez Montañez. I was born in 1936, July 16th, 1936. And I, uh, I, we were living in Pasadena at the time and my parents were born in Pasadena because they were uh, born at, at home with a midwife. Oh, wow. Were you born in a hospital? I was born in a hospital. And my mother thought that that was really great because <laughs> so many people were born at home. But now I, I kind of think, I wonder about that. <laughs> That's so great. Well, I wonder, people were born at home just because it was different times and that's how it worked? No one ever discussed that with me, uh, but uh, yes, there was segregation at that time, and uh, having a baby at home was, was probably uh, a better thing to do mm -hmm. for our mothers. Yeah. Now, I have here a picture of my mother's mother. Let me lower this. And and she was called Francisca Huerta. That was my mother's maiden name, Huerta. And and this is her family, part of her family right here. Uh huh. This is her when as, as she was she, she was younger. This is her at an older age. She was tr being tr trained as a healer in her in Chihuahua. But my grandfather came along and took her, brought her over here. And so she was a sovadora, which is a person that dispenses healing massage. Oh, wow. So, and poultices. And, and I used to go in my radio flyer wagon down to the Rose Bowl where my grandmother and my mother would pick herbs and, and 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 other things to use for healing oh, and wow. for for different things. As you mentioned before, it was a time of segregation, so we 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 all used a lot of home methods mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. And also Nasaria Montañez, who was my mother in law, and Senora Tejas were both midwives and healers and massagers too. Oh, wow. And Mrs. Tejas had the added advantage of aligning the baby before it was born. So those babies that were born with that were, were born really smoothly and, oh, wow. and ready for it. I've never even heard of that. What does that mean? Just making sure the environment for the baby is all the way well, it should be they're, in the they're massagers. Oh. So they would just align the Oh, baby. wow. Literally. But, wow. Uh -huh. Their hands, I remember their hands were always so soft. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. I would see people walking up the stairs limping. And then they'd go in Grandma and Grandpa's room, and, and she would massage them. And then they would come out walking straight. Oh, I, so lovely. I love that. I, <laughs> I would like that. to have that right now. <laughs> so, yes, and so all, I, I've always been interested in alternate methods of healing because of that. Yeah, because you had early experience with that. Yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. Now, this was my other grandma. Now, this is my great grandma oh, right wow. here. That's a nice picture. And she was married in the Queen of Angels church over there in La Placita by Old Vera yeah. Street in eight, 1871. Oh my goodness. And my grandma oh. was born in, um, she, there were a lot of older children, but she was one of the younger ones. And she was born in 1884 uh, near the corner of Granada and Huntington. Huntington uh, Drive, uh -huh. and it's now uh, San Marino, but of course it was the the, the mission land, yeah. San Gabriel Mission land at that time. Wow. wow. So, 
she too was a healer and and um, that's her in the her other house, picture this, this, this picture? is her sister this uh -huh. is the oldest one uh -huh. this is uh, wow and she was married to Okanya and um, she has uh, children she had brother uh, Anislado and Edgar and Margarita and was baptized at the there were more children than that but I can't think of them right now but um, but her parent her father was Esau Mendivas and this is Josefa Trujillo Josefa. and they, and they probably came from maybe Arizona by way of Santa Fe uh, New, New Mexico. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the the path that most people took. This is Grandma too, and this is her friend, and they've stayed friends forever. And wow. she she used to come and pick them up. This is my father's godmother, and she used to come and pick them up, and um, take them to in in a wagon with a horse and buggy uh -huh. to to the Eagle Rock Park. This was another, this was another, another uh, cousin. She, I was about, I was about 12 years old when I went to this place. What? And it's in Topanga Canyon. Oh, wow. And so, um, it's in Topanga Canyon and it has, um, that's where I met my cousin Rose Wiley. And uh, they have land there, and it's called Trujillo, um, Trujillo Ranch. They call it Trujillo Ranch. And this was Francisco Trujillo. He was the one that worked with the man from um, the man from um, Griffith Park, Mr. Griffith. Oh wow! He worked with Mr. Griffith, and then he homesteaded his prop this property. Uh huh. But now there's a house and several other little houses there, and her children live around here. And this is Grandma. Her mother and father had both been died before she was 12. Oh my goodness. So she and the oldest son got the property because he was the oldest son. You know how that mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. And so um, he, he bought some land because he wanted horses again because when he grew up he was riding horses all the time so he wanted some land with horses and maybe cattle some grazing land mm -hmm. and he bought it down in Ritchie Canyon San Bernardino or Redlands or Riverside around there mm -hmm. and so grandma went down there because to finish her schooling This is a picture of Grandma. She probably lived on Del Mar and uh, Fair Oaks around that area at this time with these these size kids. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I was given was these photographs. Oh wow! And it was only two years ago that I found figured out where the, what they were. I I asked people that special. I thought maybe. It was a play with all these costumes in these characters, but no, it wasn't. It turned out to be uh, a fundraiser at the Maryland Hotel by the um, Shakespeare Club. Oh, wow. And they were trying to raise money to get that place that they have on Grand now. Oh, my goodness. And, and so I've written a story on this, but it... At the, at the Maryland Hotel, they let them have the run of the hotel. And um, so, so they had uh, a lot of different booths, like hanky booths, doll booths, um, basket booths. They had everything you could think of, and even that fish game that we all played. And, and um, so it turned out that there wasn't a play. And it was so windy that day, you know, 
it was just terribly windy that day and so they were supposed to be out in the patio but they they found a stage for them inside <laughs> and what they did was entertain oh wow and these two angels these two angels uh -huh. right here uh-huh they they sat on each side of the stage while they they entertained <laughs> That's great. So Uncle oh, Frank great. probably sang with his guitar. He he was kind of talented. <laughs> One thing about my my grandma's family, my dad's side of the family, uh -huh. is there was always music. There was pianos and a, a violin and uh -huh. guitars, and they were always singing and 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 entertaining and wow. and we would we would write plays. The, uh, grandkids, we would write plays and act them out. She had burgundy curtains by that time. Oh my goodness. At 900 Wooster. Uh huh. And she had burgundy curtains and she would lower down the curtains so that we could uh, uh, make our play and then we'd <laughs> announce it and act out. And <laughs> That's everything. great. I was usually killed off right away. I was the, <laughs> one of the younger ones in that group. <laughs> And I was killed off and laid down deader than the doornail on the floor. This is a, 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 a famous picture here because this was the mission church that we all went to, the Our Lady of Guadalupe. It was on the corner of Raymond in California. And it was, uh, it was a place that we went to be baptized, to be married, to get our sacraments, to be Catholic. Mm -hmm. And then they'd have dariadas, da uh, afternoon parties and dances. And, the, and there was a group of women called Guadalupanas, which I have in here somewhere. Now, my aunt, the oldest one, she married this man. Where is he? He, he was an Okanya, and that's a, another old family name in, in California. This is a relative, 1863, uh, Okanya. Oh, wow. Uh, baptism. Mm -hmm. This is Grandpa's naturalization papers, and he talks about, you know, all of the kids. They were, when they lived on Del Mar, in, in the back was Peach Place. They had a duplex. And the back one was a plumbing shop because Grandpa was a plumber. Oh wow! So on Peach Place it was it was the plumbing shop, mm -hmm. and in the front it, it, it was Delmar, but it was Ellen, uh, another name before it was Delmar, and 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 that's where the family lived. And there was five kids then. The reason I'm telling you that is because because I'm going to show you a picture of him in baseball uniform because in 1909 he played baseball oh wow and he had five kids at that time this is grandma's house Ooh. her front room before i ever saw it wow when i saw it it had burgundy uh velvet uh curtains right there. perfect for a stage setting huh yes. for all of your productions but look wow i was always thinking that grandma collected these baskets mm -hmm. maybe from from indigenous people, but no, it turned out at the settlement association, they would make the little baskets. Oh wow! So her kids probably made those oh, baskets. Oh wow, that's cool. These are two of my cousins, Aunt Josie, the first daughter that Grandma and Grandpa had. They they this is Nikki and Buddy, <laughs> Mays, and they lived on Newport Street in uh, Pasadena. Uncle Frank. Um. He didn't want to be a plumber, and so he just went on, and he uh, married a woman that owned a restaurant, and so it was over there by Reseda, uh -huh. where Reseda is now. Uh huh. And there's lots of stories about Uncle Frank in, in there, about the the place. But one of the things, lots of the people. From, from the movies would come in uh -huh. to their restaurant. And they closed it one time for Bing Crosby's birthday. Wow. So 
So they would come in, and so he, this this movie was about the indigenous people and how they were treated. And so it was the first movie that they that had that kind of a a focus uh -huh. on righting a wrong and, and that. Yeah. So Uncle Frank wanted to be in there. So <laughs> that little church, I have these out of order, you can see. That little church that we were talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. these are the Guadalupanas, the oh. women who supported the church by having breakfast and do and bake sales wow. and, and those kind of things uh -huh. to help the church. So uh, Nasadia Montañez, my, my mother-in-law was in there and um, Andrea Gonzalez, who is another person that we've, we've talked about in our community. Now, this is my grandfather. In 1909, he was a, this Esperanza baseball team and it took me forever I think I think I could say that in the last three months I found this maybe more but anyway this team was very unusual because it was a multicultural t team uh, there were there were all nationalities white black Wow. Hispanic, mm -hmm. Mexican American. Mm -hmm. They were all there. And it just lasted for one year because some people didn't like the idea. So, but anyway, it was a great idea and they yes. won a lot of games. And, and what year was that? 1909. Oh my goodness. So wow. that was way before. That's excellent. <laughs> yes. And so, um, they played an Asian team from Los Angeles. Oh, wow. I wanted to say that, and you know how you get older? Oh, yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> things scoot out of your things head. Things scoot. Um, a cousin of uh, the Huerta side of the family went down to Mexico, and they were told that in this village, close to where they were, that there were a lot of Huizars, their last name. Uh -huh. So they went there. And there was an 80-year-old woman there, and she said, now I can die in peace, because she gave them this photograph that had been sent to her, and they didn't have a picture of the wedding. Oh, wow. But they had sent it to her. Apparently, she was someone important to the bride. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and so they, this picture was there. And it wasn't until later that I noticed that it said Macedonio Castro. Well, most of the pictures of the Montañez family and the community at that time were taken by Macedonio Castro, who was my brother-in-law. Oh my goodness. So it was this, and this is the, these are grandma's Francisca Molina Huerta's sisters that are married here. Wow. And, and, and so, so we have these pictures. So beautiful. Of them. Uh, I think it was Andrea Gonzalez that lent me this picture, and I made a copy of it. It's a picture of the Knights of Columbus meeting in Los Angeles. So this was a mixed group, and there's some Mexicans in there. But I did get my grandfather in uh, Mexican-American baseball in the Inland Empire. Oh, that's excellent. There's Grandpa. Which one? Yeah. Can I read that to you? Absolutely. In 1909, the multicultural Esperanza team of Pasadena, the term Esperanza means hope in English, included Francisco Chavez Wright, who was a plumber by trade. Francisco was born in Querétaro, Mexico in 1880 and entered the United States in 1895. He married California native Inez Trujillo Mendibles in 1901 and settled in Pasadena. Esperanza's well attended baseball games were held on a diamond south of California Boulevard near Lake Avenue. Wow. I can't, it says courtesy of me. But, but that 
that was um, um, that took years for me to find that out, and it wasn't on, on, until recently that that a really lovely Chinese girl at the library found it for me. Now this is the Topanga story, and my cousin Rose's family's in here, and it's. It's in the section with the homesteads. Uh-huh. And, um, and it's this, this page, these uh -huh. pages. And they've revised this, and it's up to date. But you can ask the librarian to get it from the Topanga Canyon Library. Ah, uh, like interlibrary yeah. loan. Yeah, yes. yeah. This was my aunt's wedding, the one that was Buddy and and their names is Mays, Nikki and Buddy. Well, that's a nice picture. Do you know what year? Is that the 20s or the 19, 1920 or something? Or well, let's see. She was born in 1901. So maybe yeah. She's about late 18. Yeah. So maybe about 1919. Uh huh. And this is the picture of that, that original picture of that house, that front room of oh, my yeah. house. With the basket that was probably yeah. made by her yeah. kids instead of... Yeah. yeah. And the pianos. And yeah. It's very, it's got that sort of Victorian yeah. feel. Yeah, you're right. It's more of a Victorian look than anything else. And by the time that I got in to the picture, this... It's another picture of the Guadalupanas. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Wow. Um, I've neglected to talk about my sons. I have four sons, and they're Manuel, Michael, uh, are the twins, mm -hmm. and Eric has passed away, and he was developmentally disabled and Robert, the oldest, and they've all d done well. Robert's working for the city of Pasadena oh. for some time. Manuel is working for uh, the Volkswagen dealer over in, I forgot where, and Ma Michael is working for Kaiser Permanente, and he's a systems analyst. Oh configuration guy. Mm -hmm. Does he work for the one over on Walnut or no, in the no. building? He Somewhere used else. to, uh -huh. but he, he was moved to Downey. Uh -huh. And they, they're they going to close those offices and move him to some other place. Mm -hmm. So that happens. Yes, it but, does. But the twins had a home when they were 25. They bought, wow. purchased their uh, their places. Wow. And, and uh, so they've done well. They're yeah. hard workers. And then um, Robert, after after my mother passed away, he bought her house. Oh, that's nice. So I feel really good about yeah. all of them. They're yeah. All, Michael lives in Long Beach. I uh -huh. don't get to see him as often as I used to. But I'm afraid that everybody's so busy that I haven't had a family portrait. And so I'm going to get a family portrait. and. Hopefully you can interject it Absolutely. In here somewhere. Yes. Okay. In the eighties, I worked. At El Centro de Acción oh, Social. Yeah. We opened this this new facility, funded by the city of Pasadena. Uh huh. Before this time. Emilio Severa, who is in here, here. Emilio Severa used to have the Saturday school and the, and the summer school in his garage. Oh wow! And teachers would come and and and, and volunteer and, and work with the kids. Mm -hmm. And then so we continued that in the park. And so. In Central Park. Uh, that first year, I was there. 
And then I found Kim Resendez when I was leaving, and, and she, she was just wonderful for that group. We were in a class together at Pasadena City College when I met her. I was a career planning and placement officer. Uh huh. Uh huh. There, when I, during that time. Uh huh. And did you, um, did you, were you in school in Pasadena during the time it was the six four four plan, where you went six years of uh, what was it, elementary, four years of middle school, and then two years of high school with two years on a junior college campus? I was the last class of the junior um, college, and that was where they had four years the high school and that I, I don't know exactly how that works but anyway that's the way that I, I was there at the last time. Oh wow. So when I was at El Centro mm -hmm. I, I, I organized a conference and what I did was call in people, Mexican American people mm -hmm. from or Latinos mm -hmm. from the community who had jobs. So the paramedics came, the fire engines came, the policemen came in their uniforms, and people came and they had, uh, uh, you know, those little uh, tables uh -huh. to to talk about what they did. Oh wow! And it was made for kids. Uh huh. For a career and inspiration. Career and, day. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's like. great. And. Actually, we had entertainment too, and we sold food and, and things, and we made a lot of money. So it was really, really good. And so a woman came into my office about a week later, and she said that she was very impressed with, I, that she had heard I had done all of that, and that she was very impressed with it. And I said, oh, really? Because you know how it is. I don't know if you know. Do you get a lot of, you did a good job? <laughs> <laughs> or no, no, we none of us get a lot of that. Not necessarily. Everybody's too busy or expecting you to just do it, you know? <laughs> That's right. So, so um, I was really impressed. She, she sort of told me about this organization mm -hmm. for uh, Mexican American women that was La Comisión Femenil, and she thought that we should start up a, a group th there in Pasadena. Uh huh. And so, uh, and so, what we did was I called in uh, my friends, and she called in some of hers, and we put them together, and and uh, we we started that that organization. Now that organization was geared to encourage leadership and family family uh, advocacy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was for um, women to um, sit on policy boards, commissions, um, uh, run for office, um, just take leadership roles Excellent. in the community and so at that time, I hadn't gone back to school yet. And so what I did was I went to a lot of workshops. I was, all, I was a <laughs> workshop kid, you know. And so pretty soon I was teaching workshops wow. for these ladies that they wanted, you know, time management, mm -hmm. organization skills, mm -hmm. skills for success, all mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So that's so cool. At that time, Gloria Molina was our national president. Oh, wow. So what happened was that when Carter went to Washington, he took Gloria as hit in the personnel office. He he took her and put her in the personnel office so she could recruit people into jobs with the government. Yeah. And then we, the, she really wanted to come back to California, and, and L.A., and run for assembly, 
but the male uh, politicians, they just kept telling her, no, 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 maybe next year. Mm -hmm. You know, they were all men that mm -hmm. were running for the So what we did was gather people in this house and 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 we 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 raised five thousand dollars. Wow! And my the two the twins had ten dollars that they had saved, and they gave us five dollars oh. each. Oh. And and the oh. women started crying because they said, you know, our families don't usually support us. They 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 really are annoyed with us most of the time for keeping on doing this. And so, so, um, they, t uh, uh, Sandy and someone else took, took, took the money to Gloria to, to convince her to run and they came back and they said she's going to run and we were all excited about that. And so this is us, the day she won the assembly seat. Oh. Let me get a close up of that. Oops, wrong way. Okay. Oh you want wow. To take it out of the. It's not causing a glare if you okay. keep it just the way it is. But oh, that's so great! Look at those happy people in the back. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were. Victory. Just, that's excellent. We were just, just happy. That's so parts. cool. Well, congratulations. <laughs> yes. Yes. And this picture is. Me and Sandy talking to gang girls or oh, wow. young ladies. Oh wow! Whoops! Let me get closer. Wow. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. And when I was at PCC as a student, mm -hmm. I, 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 this is Macedonio Castro. And is that his? I made an exhibit there. Oh wow! At PCC. About the about the um photographer. Uh huh. And he was he was and a he, photographer he, in Pasadena or in Mexico? Yeah, no, here in Pasadena. Well, both, oh, he both. went back down to Mexico. Okay. And took some pictures there too. That's really cool. Uh huh. And that's the exhibit. That's his camera. Oh wow! Look at that camera. That's a great camera. You're and you're industrious, <laughs> to say the least. Año de la mujer. Oh, Comisión Feminil Mexicana Nacional. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. I like the graphics on that. Uh -huh. It's a nice poster. Oh, yeah, that. And and we got one of these. It's, it's Gloria Molina. Oh. Gloria Molina State Assembly. That's cool. Did you toast in it? Yes, yes, we did. <laughs> Absolutely. And I went through PCC. And I thought I couldn't go any further. Uh huh. And somebody put Pacific Oaks College brochure on my desk one day. Uh huh. And I could see that they had the kind of situations for teaching that I could, uh, that I needed. They would, they'd have week long uh, intensives. And, uh huh. And uh, summer special. Anyway, it was it, it was all accredited, so so I went to Pacific Oaks. You got your masters, huh? Also, I I got uh, Tristan Rayner wrote some books about memoirs, about writing a memoir, mm -hmm. and and I took her UCLA class, and I was kind of hanging out with her for a while there. And I, I put together this, and I'd like to, uh, I might hand it out to, to a few people. While I was, while I was uh, a member of La Comisión Feminil, we were specially invited to see an opening of Zoot Suit. Oh, wow. The film with all the stars, and I have autographs here. Oh, that's cool. Uh-huh. That's cool. And we walked in and they played like a revolutionary song for us. Oh wow! Like they, like they recognized us as as, as revolutionaries. Yeah. yeah, excellent. That was that, that was a, that that's was so special. Fun. Yeah, that's very special. During the time we were with La Comisión, 
we went to Washington, D.C. We all had to pay our own way, you know. This was a volunteer organization. Uh -huh. And we went to Washington, D.C. and marched for the ERA oh. in uh, 1978. Oh, wow. Did you get it? Yes. But you're getting it. Tell yeah. me when. I'll tell you when. Yeah. Okay. Goodness. La Commission Femenil, when we were involved with it, had a magazine. Oh, wow. It was called Caminos. Caminos Magazine. Okay. And that year, we had Gloria Molina on the cover. <laughs> now, in, the, in here, we also have... should have marked the page. It was a really wonderful magazine. It looks like it. Uh -huh. It was made, put together by a class. It was a school project. Oh wow, really? Yes. Here's Leticia Quesada, who, who ran for office also. Uh huh. Now remember Grandpa that played baseball? Uh huh. His youngest child worked for for thirty years with the Security Pacific Bank. Oh wow! And this is the year she became vice president. Oh wow! The first Mexican American vice president. Wow! In, in ever. And not even necessarily the first woman American, a Mexican American, but just first Mexican American. That's true. Wow. Woman or man? Uh huh. That's, that's right. That's that was that's 19, an accomplishment. 1983 that this this wow. was published. Now, since then, uh huh. Every every Christmas I get something from Gloria Molina's office. Oh wow! Sometimes it's Valentina. You'll see Valentina. They went on a trip, and so they took. Valentina is their daughter. She was born on Valentine's Day. Oh. And so most of the time on Christmas you see a picture of Valentina uh -huh. celebrating. But every once in a while she'll do something like this. That's their vacation. Uh -huh. And then Valentina inside. Oh. So that kept on for years and years. And this last time when now she's, she's going to have to leave because of... of uh, term limits, she's going to have to leave uh -huh. the uh, the su uh, supervisor's uh -huh. Uh -huh. position. So so this year she, she has a picture of all of her offices. She had three offices and so her, her three staffs. So I thought that was really nice because That's I didn't nice. really realize that. Now, this is my master's thesis, and oh. it was published, oh, nice. and it's it's called Factors That Influence Chicanos Towards Higher Education. Oh, wow. And so, so, so I just interviewed people and found out how, what, why they went to college, uh -huh, uh -huh. and how did they, and, and one of the things I found out was that Nobody ever gets attaboys. Nobody ever gets those. And especially people that go out in front of people and talk or, or they're the leaders, they never get it. They usually get criticized instead of that. And so that's what my thesis said, that, that everybody should be encouraged. Yeah, yeah. Encouraged to do things. Yeah and not encouraged just to be themselves like they are now mm -hmm. or they were but people are saying not to do that now but 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 that's what what I've always tried to do is encourage people and that's what I did with my workshops and all of those things that uh, also during that time at PCC mm -hmm. I I 
I was a part, I continued with presentation, workshops, lectures for mm -hmm. my students and alumni. And later on, there was funds for Latinos, professional development uh -huh. programs. So I got in on that and I got extra money, which was always needed. And it was called the Communications Network Program. And we went with a group of people to some of the colleges and presented that. And there was a man at PCC whose name was Oscar Chavez. And Oscar and I got together and we made a cassette. And the cassette was one of those meditating tapes where while you're meditating, you're thinking of what would be really good for our students, what would what would encourage them, what would encourage them to finish their classes. And so so uh, that's what we did. So it was really kind of nice, I thought. This is one of those pictures of the Montañez family that I married into. Ah. And this picture was taken by Mr. Castro, too. And, and this is them also when they were, they were, it doesn't have a date, though. <laughs> it's your husband's family, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is this is my sister-in-law's wedding. Oh wow! And uh, I'm in it, and so is my husband. Oh wow! This is Tilly and Freddie. I like that. It's a nice picture. Naughty was I became a commissioner for LA County. Commission on Disabilities. Oh wow! And it's really kind of cute. I'll give you an insider on that. Uh, a man kept calling me and and addressing me as commissioner, so I would get used to that. Oh you wow! You know because because many of us this was the first time we were commissioners. Uh huh. And so oh, wow. that, that was good. How long was the term for that? Well, it was as long as I wanted to oh. be there. And uh, so it was really good. When one of the things when you're on a, on um, when you're working for the Department of Rehabilitation, mm -hmm. as I was, mm -hmm. and my my um, my time is doing that was was. Uh, there were lots of things that you were involved in. And one of the things is I was, I was just, you know, feeling, feeling bad because a lot of people were really mean to me lately. <laughs> so so he, the man that has that program, he gave me this. And it tells you all about leadership. It tells you all about leadership uh -huh. and... Uh, the penalty of leadership. And, yeah, the penalty. <laughs> the real truth about it. <laughs> anyway, I really like this man because he listened to me and and I lots of times I have good ideas. And, uh -huh. and he and he was he gave me credit for my ideas, you know? And he wrote me a letter and it said that I was a visionary, that I had improved their program. Oh wow. Excellent. Well, thank you <laughs> for thank that you. work. <laughs> yeah. No, well, thank you for that. So, this is an example of things that I was doing. Uh huh. This is the example of the uh, communications network. Uh, th these are the programs. Uh huh. Dr. Scott, it's on the cover. When I was a student at PCC, sometimes I'd go back and forth because of having these all out of order, really. Some, when I was a student, I, I showed some of my pictures to Dr. Leary, who, who, wrote, uh, who taught a class of um, the Southwest. And uh, so I think he wrote an article that was published about my photos. Oh, this is 
this is when they told me that I was that that I was a visionary. We credit Marianne for her vision and for pointing us towards a new training model with targeted groups. That was so nice. That's wonderful. I think. Yeah. Also, they cut back. I was 11 month in Poi, and I was cut back to 10 months. So what I did, what I did was, uh, I I just wanted to figure out what, who, how do we get the, our money, and so. It turned out that we get our money from the legislators. So I, I started the, the, of course I didn't get credit for it, I was a, I was a staff member. Mm -hmm. But I started the legislative contact committee and I would call and pester legislators until they came on our campus. And they would give them a tour and some food and, and, and this proved really good for us because we were able to rebuild our 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 our, uh, our gym mm -hmm. and the library wow. somewhat. So and Dr. Scott was 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 our our superintendent at that time, uh -huh. and he eventually became an assemblyman and a senator. So this was this was more about that, this, and and it kind of it kind of told other people how to set up this kind of thing, professional development on their campus. And then in 91, a woman, a, 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 an acquaintance of mine, or a colleague, she was working with the same group of people I was as, as a rehab counselor, which was the mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And every day, Every Monday for eight years, I I led a group at Hollywood Mental Health, and I led it with a, um, a therapist. So we were we were we were talking about how there wasn't anything in Spanish for some of her clients more than mine because. Um, all of my clients spoke English, I don't know. So anyway, so we, well, we wrote this, and she was the producer already. She, she, was a, she was a counselor at the school, but also she had taken a double master's and gotten uh, uh, produ production at UCLA. So, and I was, everything I, I've done, I've, I've, said, I'll do that, and I've learned how to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the way I did it. And uh, so we went to Annenberg at Eisenhower in Rancho Mirage, uh -huh. and there was a woman there. Um, I'm ashamed that I can't remember her name, but she produced it. She was the the person that produced this, and and it came, uh, Gloria Stefan sang "Coming Out of the Light." Oh wow! At at a key point in in this thing, uh huh. And also, um, um, we won a Silver Angel Award at Roosevelt Hotel. Oh my goodness. For excellence in moral media. Wow. So, wow. so it was appreciated. That's excellent. And uh, throughout the years I've belonged to lots of genealogy groups. Mm -hmm. This one's Cher, and they used to have a conference at Gene Autry and and I I I helped them with it because they're from Orange County and they mm -hmm. came up and, and then uh, I wrote this and I'm oh. waiting I'm I'm waiting for a publisher to knock at my door. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so I'm hoping for that. It's all about. It's all about programs. 
like the Settlement Association was started because a woman in 1880, she went to London and they had a settlement in one of their not so, the, their poorer sections. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They had a settlement house, so she came over to the United States, she came back and she, she started about 400, by 1918 there was about 400 of those all over the nation. Settlement houses for young people that were, it was a club, it was a, a, a I mean, it was clubs, individual clubs, basketball and baseball and those kind of things, and, and, and crafts, and a newsletter. And it was for, um, it was geared toward young people in... Well, ours was geared towards Latinos, uh -huh. and then uh -huh. gradually, uh, other people came in and and we 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 outgrew it and um, when uh, the reason I got to go to the settlement at all because my parents were real strict mm -hmm. the reason I got to go to the settlement was because they gave me a scholarship in junior high oh. so so that 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 seemed kind of good and so I went over there and I started the northern ants. Uh, 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 because we were all from up here, this way, uh -huh. up uh, Altadena way, uh -huh. or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the northern part of Pasadena, uh -huh. and, and so uh, that lasted for quite a while, some years after I left, and then um, uh, we, I went to uh, that after high school. My mother wanted me to go to work, and I wanted to go to school, but I didn't stick by anything. I mm -hmm. didn't do it. I should have gone to school then. And, and so then I, I, I uh, couldn't find a job in Pasadena because mostly for a Mexican-American, if you got out of high school, no matter who you were or, how, or what, what they, they expect you to clean houses or work in a factory. So. I went into LA because my cousins were working at the bank. Uh -huh. Only they were working at night. So I went into LA and I interviewed at Bank of America and I got a job. So I worked there two years in, and then, and then they, they transferred me to Pasadena. So that was kind of like something. Yeah, yeah. You came back to a place uh -huh. where it would have been hard for you to start there. And, uh -huh. and doing that, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and after you worked for the bank, what did you do before you, uh, what oh, did you do? No, back? well, I worked for the bank, and I got married. I worked huh. for two years, I got married, mm -hmm. and then in two more years, I had Robert. And in my husband's family, we were expected to stay at home. And the, the sad thing about that whole thing was that my husband didn't like my friends. So I, I was I was stupid enough to give up my friends and that happens and, even now. <laughs> yeah, and, and give up my friends and uh, just hang out with his family and yeah. his friends. And uh, so it it, it 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 was just a kind of a hard life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, kind of isolating if you're not yeah, yeah, especially since I was brought up so independent. Mm -hmm. I mean I I used to have to fix my bike. My mm -hmm. dad would tell me how, but I, I was expected to do, to do a lot of responsible things. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, uh, but, which I loved, and, and I've always been handy. I never, I never really had to ask for help a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, um, another book that I have, um, I have in my mind uh -huh. is, is uh, one of those careers, skills for success uh -huh. kind of things that that I've read so many good ones lately that I don't even know if I will do that. But 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 anyway, I, but you I, have experiences that might lend themselves to an angle. Oh, you're that, right. You know, hasn't right. been addressed. You're right. Discrimination kind of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I didn't really talk about. I, I was raised to be independent, and then I I turned into the stossel. Um, I think that happens a lot person. even now, you know. But at the same time, uh, there's a third book. Uh huh. 
and when I went back to school, I had to go back to 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 get an AA, mm -hmm. and then I got a BA through life experience, and then I got the master's, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of writing, and that is so great because because it made my writing my thesis so much easier. Oh, yeah. And I like that about Pacific Oaks College, that they allow you to use your own experience as class projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How you would define through your life, how would you define community for yourself? Or do you identify strongly as both a Mexican-American or a Latina woman? As a woman, is Pasadena a part of that definition for you? or I, I belong to PALAC, uh -huh. Pasadena Area Liberal Arts Center. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I belong to uh, Pasadena History Museum, uh -huh. I, Museum of History, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I belong to Huntington Library for years and years. Wow. And I was <laughs> docent there. You have strong roots. And I took here. art when I was t around twelve. Uh -huh. I used to walk from the house on Walnut Street to the Pasadena Art Museum mm -hmm. before it was the Asian Museum. Uh -huh. And I used to take d drawing or painting or what uh -huh. there. So so I, I was always brought up to be very independent. Mm -hmm. Now my sister was always with someone. And, 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 uh, and I noticed a lot of women are like that. They, they're with someone and they can't really go by themselves and I think it's so good but it is a dangerous time right now mm -hmm. and, and there are women snatched up and and murdered and there's so much going on New Yorker has an excellent article on that that I've been been reading little by little mm -hmm. but there's thousands of women that are abused and and and, and really we're the mothers of all of those men that abuse. And what is that saying about our mothering skills? Why do we let our boys be conditioned to be so toughy? Um, on the, the day Cesar Chavez died, I, I, I went and marched, it, it marched over in uh, King County. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, we went on buses and then mm -hmm. we marched to to hear uh, people talking about Caesar. Yeah, yeah. And I had gladiolas and a red and black flag uh -huh. and something else in my hands. And I think I put that flag away, but I couldn't find it. I would have brought it out. <laughs> you would have shown it. <laughs> uh -huh. I was also the founder of the Mexican American History Association. Ah. One of the founders. Yes, There's yes. a lot of founders. Yeah. I was born with a sense of justice, <laughs> and in kindergarten, I spoke up on behalf of a black girl that was getting treated differently than a white boy. Wow. And the teacher taped my mouth and <gasps> sat me in the corner. With tape? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't think I ever went back to that class. Oh my goodness. Uh, no. Wow. I don't remember all the commotion that must have gone on after that. Wow, and that was in kindergarten. Kindergarten. You really were born with a sense of justice. Uh-huh. That's that's amazing. I, I say right here, she came at me like a steamship <laughs> ship and, and taped my mouth. <laughs> oh, my mother said I had other kindergartens that I went to before I went to St. Andrews where, where they put me. And, uh -huh. and, and the Catholic churches weren't racist as far as I know, uh -huh. but anyway, the, the schools were. Wow. And, and so I, I didn't put that together until I was old, though. I didn't really say to myself, well, this is why. Yeah. yeah. But, but anyway... Uh, but anyway, um, so I don't remember any of those other schools that I went to. My mother said they had taken me to other kindergartens. Wow. But I guess similar things would happen. 
So since Grandpa's family owned a newspaper, I think that's what gave me the idea. I was on the hilltop at Echo in junior high, and I was on the uh, Mustang in, at uh, John Muir. I joined an oral history group at the library in the 70s, and in the 80s I joined Southwest Oral History Association, where I, I still belong to them. Oh, yeah. One of the most priceless things I remember was going to um, going to uh, the annual meeting of La Comisión Femenil, and there were all these Latinas or Mexican Americans with suits and articulate, and I was just so excited to see all of these people. I you never got to see very much. And of course, you didn't see yourself on television. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear yourself over the radio, mm -hmm. and, and 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 so just looking around, I just loved them. I just love them still. It just made me so happy. The reason I was a little articulate, but because my mother used to take us to the library every week, and we'd get books out, and and my sister would sometimes get toys. Uh huh. And. And so, so, so when I went to the Bank of America, they tested me and they said I had a, a good vocabulary. And I always wonder, I was so timid, I didn't ask, well, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Yeah. What other jobs do you have here? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they would have gotten me an appropriate job instead yeah. of bookkeeping, yeah. which, which I wasn't really good at. <laughs> was that the Central Library over on Walnut at... Uh at, on, between Los Robles and... The Bank of America. No, I mean the library that you visited with your oh, mom. Was that the, oh, one, yeah. the central one on central Walnut? Yeah, on Walnut, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I remember it when it had that patio open uh -huh, and everything. Uh -huh. The old days. My mother used to go to the library that's at Memorial Park that uh -huh. just has that little... The only the arch is still standing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and, and she went to the Girl Guides over at St. Elizabeth's oh, wow. Church. Uh -huh. She she always liked the girl guides. When we went to those women's group, we met Bar, uh, Bella Absig and Gloria oh, wow. Steinem and uh -huh. some of those big, big names. Big yeah. names, women. Early on, I, I wrote seven poems and they were published in an anthology at Santa Barbara University. Oh, wow. I taught career planning and placement. I think that everyone should, should take the class like that. And uh, one of my students wrote me a letter and she said that when she first came in, she thought she had no options and to my class. And um, then later on, she thought she had 5,000, 500,000 options. <laughs> and then at the end, she said she had five good options to pursue. That's perfect. It's perfect. It's a perfect uh -huh. arc, yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. And one of the things that I did that other people weren't doing, because I like technology, mm -hmm. and so what I did was videotape, videotape my students before and after the class, and they all had improved, and I improved. I saw myself, and I was jerking my hands around, really silly, and, and, and so I thought, this is a good thing for me to see, because <laughs> from then on, I kind of held my hands and, and, and <laughs> that year that we, um, that, that they cut back the programs, uh, I, I thought, I wrote a proposal to, to, to continue, and I, I wanted to, because there were people that were let go. And so I wanted to help them get jobs. So I got, my supervisor was Lisa Sugimoto, and she got the, uh, she did this for the faculty. And I did this for the staff. The thing I neglected, and no one told me until afterwards, I, I didn't ask for more money. <laughs> I should have asked yeah. for more money. <laughs> Wow. But I didn't. But you I managed didn't. without more money, huh? Well, I did. Yeah. I did. I did because because uh, I paid off this house in the 80s. Wow. 
the Department of Rehabilitation is really good, and there's money out there for people that are disabled, and I had eighty-four thousand dollars to spend on my stu my clients every year, and and uh, I could buy them books, tuition, clothes, childcare, any of the things that they might require. Wow. So so there's some good programs out there, but you just have to go and find them. Yeah. In the nineties, I had to leave work suddenly because because Eric was ill and he was just running down. Now, one of the things I did for Eric was I would take energy healing classes and I worked with a lot of people that, that did that. Mm -hmm. So we would go and get our energy uh, stabilized and stuff. And So I, I still do that now and I work on myself. I take Reiki classes from uh, Laura Davis, who worked with me at PCC and is now teaching that. Oh, wow. And the other day I took Crystal and uh, class and then with combined with the Reiki healing and I have a drum and I took the drum class also. Now, I don't know what, how, how that prolong my son's life, but it might have, because I was I was always doing that. I was always working on it. And so um, I, I would just like, uh, and I took pranic healing from Master Ko, and he, he, he is remarkable. He has, he has given people back their sight. Wow. Uh, he's been on television. And so I think there's a lot to that energy healing. Well, and you have, a, you have generations of experience in your family. With, That's true. You know, it That's runs true. in your blood to, to, yeah. to see, see those he, other forms of, you know. Of healing. Yeah. Yes, my grandmothers. Yeah. My grandmothers were doing that, and, and so I felt that, that I could do that. And, I could I could share my fault. One of my faults is that I'm so sensitive, and I get my feelings hurt easily. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when things don't go right, I just back away, and I'll just stay away from people and stuff. But um, but anyway, I I'm just uh, enjoying my old age. And I have the boys over on Thanksgiving and on Christmas, uh -huh. and we make tamales once in a while, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, I I think that all in all, it, it's it's there's been challenges, but I think that without challenges, your life is kind of bland, and. Uh, I, I think I, I've enjoyed my life. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh -huh. you've, had, you've done a lot of interesting things and you've, you've had a lot of interesting perspectives that you've shared, so thank you. Thank you. Um, what are you proudest of in your life? My boys. My boys. I, I, I just, I just uh, every time something good happens to them, like a promotion or they get a raise or something like that, I, I'm overjoyed. That's lovely. <laughs> because although I don't feel that I got all of the promotions I deserved, mm -hmm. I can say honestly that I was told to apply for different jobs and, and I didn't do it because I was so stuck on so one of my projects that mm -hmm. I was doing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so silly. You yeah. have to think ahead. Yeah, and, and 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 go for the opportunities as they come your way. Yeah, who or what has been the biggest influence in your life? Well, I had a lot of influences. My grandmother's, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I've always gone back to them and uh -huh. their herbs and their their uh, energy healing and their yeah. and their massaging. Yeah. Uh, my mother was 
a strong woman and she she worked really hard and I didn't realize that until later how hard she worked our pillowcases were always iron she wow. worked wow and and she would she would make these beautiful meals these beautiful dishes you know that would look so beautiful when she would wow. serve us wow. you know but she didn't teach either of us <laughs> to cook <laughs> So whose recipe for tamales are you using when you... My mother-in-law. My mother-in-law ah. would come over and, 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 and we would have a great time wow. cooking and, and, uh, and, uh, but in, <laughs> anyway, it was just, it was just like, uh, I think that, uh, the best thing in my life is, is, is when my son's you know something happens good for them and uh, and uh, I, I think that's really neat and I, uh, I I've had some things I had thyroid cancer and skin cancer oh my goodness and um, and uh, oh, diabetes Wow so so well, you look great. <laughs> Whatever uh, you've done uh, has I I I I seriously exercise and I try to be a vegetarian most uh. of the time. Do you have any classic family stories? Oh, yes. My un my grandfather used to take them the family to Oak Grove Park. Uh-huh. And so he they would be in a Model T or Model A or something uh -huh. and they'd be going and so he'd tell them a story just to keep them all quiet. <laughs> and, and he'd tell them a story about the ancient Incas. And they would run across that castway and deliver things to the, to the emperor. And they could run so fast that they could scoop up a, a, a rabbit and have it peeled, peeled, not peeled, skinned. Like skinned, uh -huh. skinned by the next, by the time they got to the next relay. Wow. So my Uncle Frank was seen running into the bushes at Oak Grove Park. <laughs> and so his dad went over there and said, Frank, what are you doing? And he said, he said, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, if those Indians can do it, so can I. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> I like that. That was one. And um, my cousins all are high achievers, I think. Adrian, she passed away uh, last year. She was a lawyer. And, uh, and she married a lawyer and they lived over in, uh, uh, down in Orange County Way. And uh, my cousin Evelyn, she is uh, she is uh, still volunteering at uh, at the uh, I forget what you call it in Long Beach about the oh, the the fish. Oh, the aquarium. The aquarium. Uh -huh. She 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 volunteers there. Oh, still. Wow. And she also takes care of a husband that that's kind of disabled. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He was disabled as an adult. He was in the service. He was uh, working for one of those like McDonnell Douglas uh -huh. for years, and and uh, so she and my cousin Lillian is uh, is 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 uh, recuperating right now. But she was. Uh, She's always helping people and helping students, and she still has them come over, and mm -hmm. she still helps them. And she has a whole large family that plays. Uh, there's one boy that uh, plays a lot of instruments. Like, actually, his dad also, her dad also mm -hmm. played a lot of instruments. Mm -hmm. And my cousin Gil, who, who's a quiet guy, and he likes to go and visit cemeteries and looks at all looks up all of our relatives that we have a 
a, a lot of relatives, and some of them are, are buried at Mount View. Uh -huh. uh, and, and my cousin Dan, who lives in, in Orange County, uh, I get to see him every once in a while. My cousin Belene, who lives across the street from Cerritos. Uh -huh. For a while after I left Pasadena City College, I worked at the Department of Rehabilitation, but at night, three nights, I would go down to Cerritos and work there. Cerritos College at the multi Multicultural Center. Mm -hmm. And my cousins lived right across the street, so yeah. I got to see them every once in a while. Yeah. My cousin Belene and Carol and her husband Hector. I okay. think I'll. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'm glad for this opportunity. Who is the one that will. I'm thanking for this. The well, public library. The the public library, and probably more the the Institute of Museum and Library Services, who provided the grant to fund this project. Oh, is that a state yes. institution? It's a it's a, actually a federal institution. A federal institution. And the, of the grant is administered in California by the state library. Okay, that sounds good. Institute of Museum and Library Services. Institute of Museum and Library S Services. Services. Uh huh. By the federal government. We, we like government. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh -huh. They're my bread and butter. <laughs> that, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, thank that's you right. very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> and on camera. Okay. okay. I, I neglected to tell you about my Obama story. I, I am part of Obama's, President Obama's uh, kitchen cabinet. Oh, wow. And I communicate with them. And sometimes Axelrod will, will send me a, 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 a note and asking me about something, and I'll respond. Huh? For instance, one of my issues is that I like Hillary and Bill Clinton, and I was for them all the time that they were president until they did that NAFTA thing, uh -huh. which took all of the jobs out of the country mm -hmm. and I'm really I'm really worried about that because it just bothers me so much yeah. that we're all servants and, and you know what's the difference with a servant and a slave I mean that, that, that that's really kind of close by and and so all of our manufacturing is going to to out of the country and it and people in other countries are being exploited they buy the children and start them Sewing, it's just despicable. And so that, that's what I wrote. I wrote, he said, what can we do about jobs? And I said, encourage them to start jobs and keep them in the United States. Start and, and look for some, some enticements that Clint, Bill Clinton put in there for people to go out of, out of the country and, and take them back. Take back all of the tax deferments and anything that you that that that, that we put in place for those people that are going out of the country. So um, so I sent him, but my first my first letters to him had to do with have to do with uh, medicine, health, alternate forms of medica me medicine mm -hmm. and, and how we should concentrate on healing, not on the disease, yes. on healing, on being healthy. Yeah. So anyway, that's what, they've, they've sent me pictures, they've sent me a lot of things from the, the Obamas. I just hope they don't ask me, well they have sent me invitations to to go, but I haven't gone. Well, you, maybe you should. <laughs> you, you, thank you for your service in so many ways. <laughs> yes, I just love being of service. You are. You don't stop. <laughs> I don't stop. No.